the officials in the booth have reversed the call on the field about Wednesday night's debate. And my call. I originally said President Trump lost the battle but won the war and probably the election. I believe after a full day of absorbing reactions and studying the debate across the spectrum, that Donald Trump won that debate and won the election. And I'll want to tell you why. Uh, as I will say to Larry Kudlow later, first reports are often wrong. It's a cliche in the news, and it's, you hear it a lot. The first reports were not good for Trump. But it then began to sink in how bad the debate moderators had manipulated how biased ABC Disney was. My new Fox News column this morning is entitled Morning Glory, the worst debate in the history of presidential debates. And I'll come back to that. But let's not just rely on me or Fox News. Let's start with CNN, cut number 26. David Chalian, one of the really smart people over at CNN, said this the about economy the here, polling. Uh, who, would you, who would better handle the economy is what we ask. Going into the debate, before the debate, 37% said Harris, 53% Trump. After the debate, again, margin of error stuff here, but numerically she lost a little ground. 35% said so after the debate that she would better handle the economy. 55% said Trump, and we know that is one of his strongest suits across the polling in this election. And he seemed to hang on to that piece in this debate tonight, according to our poll of debate watchers. And now all the polls of debate watchers, that's all first stuff. What really happened all day yesterday was it settled in. ABC and Disney fixed the debate. It was an ambush of Trump. And by the time I got on Kudlow's show yesterday afternoon at 4 p.m., I was pretty certain what had happened. Cut number 20. This is when I joined Larry and uh, uh, Katie Pavlik and the editor of Breitbart at Large. Here is cut number 20. Hugh Hewitt, your take on any of this. Well, I, I want to say kudos on your riff, Larry, because the oldest cliche in news is also true. First reports are usually wrong. Wow, and the you. first reports last night are that, you know, Trump lost, Harris won. Over the course of the day, I have been seeing three things emerge. Trump was okay. Not his best, but he did get in some haymakers. Mm -hmm. His closing statement was best. And anytime you're focusing on migration, you're winning. Kamala Harris, by contrast, was at her best, and it wasn't very good. And then third, and I think this matters a lot, it was the worst presidential debate in modern history. <laughs> I do not believe even an independent or even a moderately fair Democrat will conclude other than that was an ambush. And as that settles in, as people study what Alex just referred to, the vice president did not answer one question nor did ABC, which is owned by Disney, ask one question about China. Not mm. one question. Mm. I was thinking of their theme parks, their merchandising. Yep. I think about the NBA, I didn't talk about China. Mm. Not one question about Iran. They did not bring up our hostage who was executed along with five others mm. in Israel on the 10th seven. I am so amazed at the unprofessionalism and the, the deeply disrespectful of America, as Katie mentioned, performance by ABC, I think by the weekend, Trump may have won this. Mm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a moving river of opinion that gathers force. And at this point, yeah, I, I wanted more. I wanted perfection. But that was the best the vice president's ever going to be. She's not very good. Mm. The weaponization of lawfare is well known and resented by a vast majority of Americans. The weaponization of primetime media has never been seen that nakedly before, and it's having impact. One more cut from Kudlow, cut number uh, 21. Chief Hewitt, regarding foreign policy, you were mentioning China, which never came up, which is almost tragic. But I thought that, um, I thought Mr. Trump punched away pretty good on the catastrophe in Afghanistan and Hugh, how that, um, you know, you could connect the dots from that Afghanistan uh, catastrophe into uh, Putin, Russia invading Ukraine. Uh, I don't know, you are a foreign policy expert among other things. Do you think Mr. Trump made those points? 
He began to. He said, look, we had an agreement. It was a condition-based agreement. Mike Pompeo negotiated. They broke the conditions. We were not going to withdraw. You did withdraw. It was catastrophic. He could have gone on then to the Arlington Cemetery controversy, and he didn't. But generally speaking, that was very good. Mm. The difficulty is, I'm a lawyer. Kamala Harris is a lawyer. I've been a law professor for 27 years. We're very good at saying nothing at great length. That's what she did. Donald Trump is a developer. <laughs> he can smell a rat in about five seconds. And he knew there was an ambush after mm. the second question on abortion. Mm. And he got mad. He can't get mad. Larry, you work for him. He can't get mad right. because then he rushes. Right. And that's unfortunate. That, that, that is true. But it's not just me. It's not just Fox News. It's not just CNN's uh, David Shelley. Jake Tapper, by the end of the day, is, is saying this to America on CNN. Okay, so Fox News was hammering ABC all day long, but cut number 28, Jake. Vice President Harris began the debate by punting the first question on the economy. Do you believe Americans are better off than they were four years ago? So I was raised as a middle class kid, and I am actually the only person on this stage who has a plan that is about lifting up the middle class and working people of America. It went on from there. Despite the economy being the number one issue facing the country, the sitting vice president generally reverted to talking points about a few of her policy proposals. Even Harris allies today are saying that she needs to talk more about what she will do for Americans if elected. Senator Bernie Sanders will be here in a second to talk about more about the need for her to fill in some of those blanks. On the border, another vulnerable issue for Harris, she also dodged. Would you have done anything differently from President Biden on this? So I'm the only person on this stage who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations for the trafficking of guns, drugs, and human beings. Okay, that wasn't the question. When asked how she would break through the Israel-Hamas war stalemate, Harris said this. We need a ceasefire deal and we need the hostages out. And so we will continue to work around the clock on that. Okay, but again, how? Okay, that's Jake Tapper, that's CNN. All right, media, uh, polls are impacted over time. Usually it takes seven to 10 days to see it. I think Trump's gonna end up winning this debate in the minds of the public out of disgust with ABC, disgust. Donald Trump was okay, not at his best, but okay, got in some very good ones and they talked a lot about the border crisis and the impacts on community like Springfield, Ohio. Kamala Harris was at her best. It wasn't very good. Here is the beginning of my column this morning, my morning glory column, which I write for Fox News on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Not one question Wednesday night about the execution of Hearst Goldberg Pollen and five other hostages two weeks ago, or about any of the Americans murdered by Hamas terrorists on October 7th. Not one question on Iran, which is in weeks of acquiring a nuclear weapon and which is paying and perhaps precisely directing repeated attacks by its proxies on American forces in the Gulf of Arabia, the Red Sea, Iraq, or Jordan. Not one question about the capacity of President Joe Biden to continue as president. And not one single question about the People's Republic of China, its genocide against the Uyghurs, its oppression of Hong Kong, its threat against Taiwan or the Philippines, or its military buildup, the largest, most expensive peacetime military buildup in history. Perhaps ABC's parent, Disney, put the kibosh on questions that would upset the People's Republic of China and endanger the company's theme parks in the country or the release of its movies in China. Who knows? But ABC and Disney made time for a long exchange on abortion rights, which have been discussed again and again and again in this campaign, and for an idiotic exchange on regrets. I've had a few, but then again, too few questions from the moderator, David Muir, to Trump about January 6th. There are at least four, and other people say six, five, five maybe, moderator interventions or rebukes disguised as, quote, fact checks of former President Donald Trump. None, none of Vice President Kamala Harris. The bias pulse. It could be felt by everyone. Democrats and leftists cheered. Republicans were first shocked and then outraged. 